I love horror movies and horror games, but not for the reason most sane people like things. I like them because 9 times out of 10, they're laughably awful, and that always puts a smile on my face. I'm built a little different, where when something is so trash, it becomes a treasure to me. Like, I have the most fun watching or playing horrible garbage. And that, that sounds a little weird, but I've been thinking about it recently, and it, it's something kind of like color blindness. You know how some people process colors in different ways, they don't see them the same way? That's kind of me with quality. I'm quality blind, where when something is so bad, I perceive it as being a masterpiece. I have so much fun with bad movies or bad games. They always make me happy. Like, happier than like a normal good game or good movie sometimes. And I know I'm not alone. It's a very real phenomenon. It's called fun bad. It is always enjoyable to just sit down and watch or play something that is objectively not good and just laugh at it, make fun of it. You know, point your finger at it, shoot spitballs, make jokes about it with your friends. Like, it's a good time. And for years now, horror has been the main genre that's been pumping stinker after stinker, blessing us with some timeless classic fun bad content. There is more shit in the horror genre than there is in the scat fetish genre. Horror has just become like the go-to cum dumpster of absolute abominations when it comes to entertainment in movies and games. But unfortunately, sports fans, I think we're starting to enter the dark ages of the horror genre where it's no longer making fun bad content, it's just making boring bad content that's no longer got anything redeemable about it at all. And the best example of this is the newest Insidious movie, The Red Door, which I saw last night. Now before getting into that, I want to thank today's sponsor, Call of Dragons. Huge thanks to Call of Dragons for sponsoring today's video. Call of Dragons is a beautiful new MMO fantasy conquest game developed by the creators of Rise of Kingdoms. And they've been working on this project for over three years now. It's huge battles, tons of strategic freedom, and it's PC and mobile crossplay. Big coolest feature now is the behemoths. They're these massive beasts that you can use to crush your enemies in PvE and PvP. You can fight with your alliance uh, in uh, guild versus environment. So, to tell you about a few of them, we brought our whole alliance here with us today. Whoa! Call of Dragons! Yep! Yeah. Yep! The Thunder Rock! The, the, the Thunder the Rock! The Thunder Ancient Rock. Magic Bear! Mighty oh. Red Dragon, baby! There we yep. go. Yep. Thanks, guys. Really it, appreciate it. Well, Anytime. It's baby. contagious when it's Call of Dragons, baby. There's ancient giant bears, Thunder Rocks, Red Dragons. There's actually eight unique behemoths you can collect, and uh, you have to enter their lair take them down uh, and you can actually own eight or as many as you want and you train them up they've got their own skill trees so you give them the the skills and powers you want so that you can take them into battle and crush your enemies with them huge thanks again to call of dragons for sponsoring today's video you can download it today by clicking the link in the description or by scanning the qr code on your screen or by using code cod monster yeah if you use code cod monster in game you'll get special rewards so thanks again Magic Monsters Mastery. This is the fifth Insidious movie, and it is long overstayed its welcome. The party's over, the music stopped fucking two movies ago, and yet it's still here trying to party, and it's just embarrassing now. The fourth movie was already overstaying its welcome, people were already fucking tired of it then, and now it's just sad and desperate. They've got this franchise propped up like weakened at Bernie's. It's dead, and they're just like puppeteering its corpse right now. Insidious the Red Door has no story to tell whatsoever, it has no reason to exist other than try desperately to milk a little extra coin out of the property's name because most people remember the first three movies very fondly, especially the first one, I remember that being like a phenomenon when that one came out. So the name still has weight to it and they're trying their best to just get a little bit more out of it without anything left in the tank. So. The reason I'm not making a moist meter on this is because I really want to dive into just what makes a horror movie no longer fun bad and it just becomes a sad worthless experience like Insidious the Red Door. So I will be getting into spoilers a little bit in this. I'm not going to spoil the whole thing or anything like that, but I do need to get into specifics in order to make the point that I'd like to make. Now Insidious the Red Door is again the fifth entry in this franchise, but the beauty of that is you don't need to see any of the other ones to be caught up to speed on this because it doesn't really tie into anything, and the only thing that it has is loose connections and the same characters from the previous films. 
You don't need to know anything about their history. You don't need to know anything about the world that it's in. It doesn't even really need to give you a refresher course on it because everything that happens starts after a hypnotic memory erasing moment. So they get their memories sealed away. They get amnesia in order to forget all the trauma of their past. And then this movie is them slowly like realizing that something fishy happened why can't they remember like a whole year of their life and then that's kind of what the movie picks up on so you don't really need any of the other insidious background information which is good because i don't think there's a single person in the fucking world who remembers insidious 4 i feel like we all got memory erased with how bad that movie was because absolutely nobody i've seen online talking about this or anyone i've talked to about it like tiana and i saw it together and i mentioned insidious 4 to her and she had no fucking clue what i was talking about i sounded like a crazy person to her and I don't even remember a single plot point from it other than like a jailer jingling keys like he was trying to entertain like a Twitch audience or something. So this is one of the few compliments I can give to the Red Door. At least you didn't need to see the fourth movie in order to understand what's going on here. Because everything that happens in this film is already nonsensical and self-contained to begin with. So, the film is all about them getting their memories sealed away. You know, they, they've got it trapped and then it's slowly getting back those memories Dalton, the son in the franchise, is going off to college, and the dad, Patrick Wilson, is, he's kind of an absent father. He's been pushed away, and he's always foggy, as he calls it. His memories aren't what they should be, and it makes him upset, so he basically abandons his family in order to exist in this perpetual trance of confusion. So, he's not a great dad anymore, and Dalton resents him for it, but he eventually lets his dad drive him to college. And he's an art student, and he gets a new art teacher who's a real hard ass, and she basically brings the demon out of him. He goes into, like, a meditative state under the instruction of the art teacher, and then he draws the red door. And once the red door is put on the canvas, all hell breaks loose. And by that I mean two jump scares happen, and pretty much nothing else. This movie is not even a horror film. That's the big plot twist. It is legitimately like a CW supernatural thriller, at best. There are very, very few horror elements in here other than just very loud jump scares occasionally, but even that's pretty rare. They ordered a horror movie but forgot the scary. They said, hey, can we put the scary on the side and forgot the side of scary. This shit is so flat and goofy. So, Dalton, after drawing the red door, a hand, like, slaps his hand. He's like, oh, no. So then he rushes back to his dorm in order to keep painting it and figure out what this means, because now he's starting to see things. Also, he has a roommate, and her name is Chris. And she doesn't make any sense in this film, because she is, like, the complete antithesis to a character you'd expect in a horror movie. She is constantly joking, and I think... That's fine as a character trait, and I think it would work in other movies, but here, she does not stop joking. She doesn't take anything seriously. So when something that's supposed to be somewhat scary happens, Chris will immediately just get rid of all the tension with a joke like, Hey, what are you doing on the floor? I just put a bottle rocket in the frat dude's toilet, and I think it went straight up his asshole. And, like, come on, get up. You gotta see this. He's walking around with a firework in his butt. And it's like, oh, wow. Okay, so now there's, like, no tension left and there's no scares left. Like, I don't even dislike Chris as a character because she was entertaining, at the very least, whereas nothing else in the movie was. At least she was trying to make something out of nothing with this film. But it does not fit in what is supposed to be a horror film. Because when she's on screen, you know that it's just going to be a bit silly. Because that's, that's all she does, is just have fun. Even in the most tense of moments, she gets strangled by an invisible demon. And right after that, like, within two scenes, she's back to joking and gets a bunch of, like, nightlights and makes jokes about it. So, it's just a character that doesn't take the movie seriously, so how the fuck is the audience supposed to? You have a character that is actually just, like, making fun of the film that they're in. But anyway, uh, so, Dalton paints the red door, Patrick Wilson's character's in his own home, and he's trying to go through these, like, memory things... And he's doing, like, a matching game on the window, which is a goofy idea to begin with. And they're trying to do, like, subtle scares. So I'll, like, lift up one of the things and you see, like, someone wearing an orange shirt in the background by the tree. And it's out of focus. And you're like, oh, goodness. That's horrifying. And then the scene will drag on for, like, two minutes of nothing happening. 
and then just like the glass explodes for a cheap jump scare. Like it doesn't even really build tension. All it does is it'll show you something a little out of focus in the distance. And then all of a sudden, a fucking cannonball goes off. Just a really loud explosion noise. And that's the scare. So then that, you know, the glass blows up and Patrick Wilson's jogging around his house going, Oh, no! And then he, like, shuts a door. And then a ghost man pushes him against a wall and he finds a box of important lore tidbits. But not really, because the, the lore tidbits don't really mean much of fucking anything in this film, because there isn't a real narrative that they want to tell. But anyway, uh, I'll just fast forward a little bit here. Uh, after learning about his dad, Patrick Wilson, he then goes to his wife, who has divorced him, and she reveals all the, the bad stuff, the stuff that he wanted to forget through the hypnosis. She reveals that while under the possession of the demon, he attacked the family and traumatized the kids and his wife really couldn't look at him in the same way anymore. She just felt fucking sick by his presence. So that's why they sealed off the memories. That's also why they divorced. And now, since Dalton has drawn the red door, everything's starting to flood back and the family's getting those memories returned to them gradually. And they're seeing things. So Patrick Wilson keeps seeing a couple of ghosts and that's when it's revealed that the reason all this is happening is because the dad, Patrick Wilson, and Dalton are able to astral project themselves into the spirit realm, like fucking Aang from Avatar The Last Airbender. So the entire half of this movie is spent astral projecting for the most part. And it's not like this is new for Insidious. We've known this for a long time. This has been a core component of the story. But here, it doesn't even bother to be horror. It is mainly like that astral projection in the smoky spot. It, like, it's literally just a room with a fog machine, and that's it. It's not, like, very interesting to look at. It's just barren, empty wasteland. Dalton is the first one to realize that he can do this, and he does it uh, at his college dorm in order to, like, scare Chris. I shit you not, when he learns that he can astral project himself out of his body, first thing he does is go to Chris's room, grabs her little mouth piano, the melodica, and he plays a, a little wonderful symphony. So he hits her with, like, the beep, beep, boop, boop, beep. Like the actual electric zoo out of fucking Spongebob, which startles her. And then she like goes downstairs and she's like, were you in my room? He's like, no, I was actually in the spirit realm in your room. She's like, oh, interesting. So then he does it again at a frat party in order to talk to a frat douchebag who died from alcohol poisoning because he... He thinks that he has clues about the door that needs to be closed. Because he had seen him once before and he's like, close the door. He's like, wait, what do you mean by close the door? So he goes back this time in the spirit realm to ask him more about the door. And that's when Chris gets strangled by the big demon. So in the Insidious franchise, the main bad guy is the lipstick face demon, I think is what he's called. He's that goober goofball who's like kind of red but also just kind of silly looking and his signature move in the spirit realm is he always puts a tiny tim record on the player you know the guy who sung the song like living in the sunlight living in the sunlight loving in the moonlight having a wonderful time that guy he always plays that music in the spirit realm and it's supposed to be unnerving but it is so cringe that kind of shit is in horror movies and horror games out the wazoo Tiny Tim, like, the, the music from Tiny Tim has become a horror movie and horror game staple for low-budget, low-effort productions. And I feel horrible for that. That's just, that's so unlucky for, for Tiny Tim's music. But yeah, that's what the demon does in the spirit realm. It's that guy. And he's breaking into the real realm because Dalton keeps uh, astral projecting. And I don't want to get into, like, really deep spoilers, so I'm just going to be a little broad here. But eventually... Patrick Wilson learns that Dalton is in trouble because Lipstick Face Demon is taking over his body. So, Patrick Wilson, astral projection to the spirit realm, tries to find Dalton. Dalton's struggling and his body in the real world has now been taken over and he's a, he, he might hurt Chris. So, the movie, within the last, like, 20 minutes, very desperately wants to be over. It, it very, very much tries to speed run through everything in order to just end quickly and be done. It didn't want to be a long movie because it didn't have a story to tell. It was already running so thin. So they really just shoehorned in the most cliche shit imaginable at the end here. 
So basically, Patrick Wilson's spirit projects himself, or Astral projects himself, somehow immediately finds Dalton, it breaks his chains with a fucking hammer. Also, I'm just getting into fucking full spoilers here, I'm sorry. I, I said I was going to be broad, but I actually just can't talk about how silly this is without just being specific. So major spoilers here for how the movie ends. I'm doing you a favor though, really, because I don't recommend seeing it, because there's nothing redeeming about it. It's not fun bad. But anyway, Patrick Wilson swoops in like a hero. Dalton has still hated him all the way up until this point. And now Dalton's memories have unlocked, so he remembers that his dad tried to hurt him. But Patrick Wilson breaks the chains with a single fucking hammer hit and and frees Dalton from lipstick face demon's control. And then they both run away and close a door behind them, to which Dalton then puts paint on it and seals it forever, like a fucking sarcophagus, just entombs the demon back in that in that you know, record-playing realm. And that's so fucking dumb. Like, I think that is so lazy. Because everything just is a, a plot convenience. Patrick Wilson somehow astral projects and gets to the exact spot he needs and finds Dalton, who is buried under a bunch of chairs and is able to break his chains very easily with a hammer. And then the lipstick face demon, for some reason, is following them very slowly. And this is the worst fucking trope in horror films. The demon is always just so fucking lazy. He had unlimited opportunities to stop them and thwart their escape, kill them, anything, possess them. But for some reason, he's more than content to just watch and do nothing. And even when he has uh, Dalton's body completely under his control, instead of killing Chris, he just does goofy smiles and, and bobs to the side like that and nothing else it, the horror movies of the modern age just make the big bad demon or ghost or whatever seem so fucking incompetent like actual bumbling imbeciles they have an unreal amount of time and opportunities to kill these people or at the very least just stop them from thwarting their plan but they choose not to they must they must enjoy it to some level, because again, the demon in this movie actually watches him free Dalton, slowly waddle their way around this this realm, and he just stands there watching and he goes, Aah! like just makes a loud noise, and that's it. Nothing else. And then when they finally close the door, then the panic sets in, so now the demon like punches a hole through the door and he's like slapping him around like, let me out, let me out. Even though he could have just stopped him fucking five minutes before that an unlimited amount of opportunities. It's just so stupid. Like, it's not fun bad. It's just kind of frustrating to sit there and watch it. Because it's boring. It's fucking boring. This happens a billion times in horror movies. Like, it is the most cliche shit ever. I'm so tired of seeing it. Like, I love fun bad movies, but Insidious the Red Door and movies like it are no longer fun bad. They're just copy and pasting the homework from other horror movies of the past and doing nothing different or interesting and it's just, it's so lazy that it's not fun bad. And it makes me upset. It's just a waste of time. It is a cash grab off the Insidious name, and it has nothing to offer. It is just a waste of your money and waste of your time. So I wanted to rant about that a little bit, because I'm a little concerned that horror movies going forward aren't going to be fun bad anymore. They're going to follow the Insidious Red Door formula of just doing the exact same thing a million times over. And it's not, it's going to lose all of its luster. Horror games have already been going this direction. A lot of horror games that come out these days are just the same old walking simulators that do nothing different. It's just the same jump scares, same walking simulators, so they're fucking boring now. It's very rare that you get a fun, bad horror uh, horror game. But now, now it seems like movies are starting to go that direction too, and I, I think Insidious, The Red Door, has really set the bar for what I think a lot of these are going to look like, which sucks. So... Just wanted to talk about this a little bit. That's really about it. See ya.